Number eight then from paper two of the 2018 higher mass. There we go, wave equation there. Usual two parts. First part, rewrite that in this form in terms of a single trigonometrical term. And in the second part, do something with it. So first of all, for four marks, write this in this form. Well, they only allow you to do it one way, which is this. Use the expansion. I'll keep the K outside just now. You can pop it in, do whatever you like. Cosine, you look up the front, that's cos x cos a, changes to a plus, notice the be sine reverse at the front, sine x sine a, what happened to that s? Now, there are degrees, and you're meant to be putting these degree signs in all the time, but they don't penalise the emission of degree signs, so I'm not going to do it here because it's just a quick sketch. Now, I like to rewrite it formally in the same order as this so that the cos x is the variable, cos a is just a constant, so it's k cos a lots of cos x, saying that specifically, and here again, that's the coefficient there, plus k sin a lots of sin x, just so you can readily identify the two parts. From that then, you can identify the coefficient of sine as k sin a, which should be negative one, and the coefficient of cos, which is k cos a, as 2. Now, strictly speaking, there are two equa simultaneous equations here to be solved. If you square and add them, but you don't need to show this at all, if you square and add them, you'll end up with k squared equals negative 1 squared plus 2 squared, and you can go straight in with the answer now, because that's going to be 5, take the square root, root 5. And if you take the two equations and divide them, that's why I put them in this order, sine over cos, you get the tangent. The case cancel out. Tan A is going to be negative 1 upon 2, I'll put. So A is going to be the inverse tan of negative a half. I don't know the inverse tan of negative a half. I'm not using the negative just now. In fact, I'm not going to use the negative at all because these are the real simultaneous equations here that need to be satisfied. This says, since K is positive, the sine is negative, so it's there or there. The cosine is positive. That's what needs to be satisfied. So I know I'm down in the fourth quadrant, so it's going to be a big angle. So inverse tan of a half. And you just use your calculator for that. And you get it's 26.565 degrees in that quadrant, which means A is going to be 360 minus 26 point, I'll just call it point 0.6. So A is going to be 33 and another 3.4. Put it all together, and that was equal to root 5 cos x minus 333.4 degrees. Now part B's got hence or otherwise, as if you would do the otherwise after going through all that, Find the minimum value of this expression. Well, it's usually related to the first part. You look at this, you look at that, and you think, oh, that's just three times that. So that expression is actually three times root five cos x minus 333.4 degrees. Well, I've just wasted time writing all that, really, haven't I? Uh... So the minimum value of that, since it's just a straightforward cos, it's just got a phase shift, its amplitude is 3 root 5, which means that the minimum value will be negative 3 root 5. And I'm pretty sure you can just leave it in that exact form rather than go for a decimal. Part 2 was, when should that minimum value occur? Well, on a cosine, it should occur at 180. So that means it should occur when the angle x minus 333.4 is equal to 180. So that's going to push it well off the scale, because when you add that on, 5 is 513.4. So you need to bring it back into your window, which goes from 0 to 360, which means x is going to be 513.4 minus the 360, you see, I'm just having to take that off again. You could have actually got the answer quicker, I suppose, if you go into the previous law of negative 180 and then added 333.4 onto 180. 
So finally, x is going to be 153.4. Notice, strictly speaking, it's not degrees, because the degree sign was there already. If you put in the degrees, it'll make no difference. We'll just ignore that.